Hello, the program is Stan the History Man. I'm your host, Dr. Stanley Sandler. I'd spoken the last time, last program, about the, uh, well, Abraham Lincoln, somewhat the American Civil War, and I thought I'd maybe write some, to talk about something of the um, uh, naval aspects of the, the American Civil War, particularly the Monitor. And some people think, well, the Monitor, the Merrimack, actually the Monitor, Virginia, the Merrimack was the original name of the Union frigate that was the uh, actually scuttled uh, at the beginning of the Civil War and raised by the Confederacy and renamed the Virginia. And some people say, well, that's the first clash, first use of ironclads in battle, which isn't true. They were used during the Crimean War by the British and in the war between Denmark and Prussia, in, also in 1862. Guess who won that war? But uh, it was pretty quick. The uh, Monitor was a brainchild of John Erickson, a Swedish-American inventor, and he called it Monitor, the first one, because he uh, Monitor had another meaning of warning, admonition, okay? This is a warning to the Europeans to stay out of America's business during the American Civil War. And so his concept was a low-line, here I got a picture of, of one, a low-line vessel, um, which could be very useful for the Civil War battles, uh, naval battles in the, on the coastline and the inland uh, waterways of America. Now, this model itself, actually, I built myself, and that's kind of an interesting story, too, because uh, there, there are no, that I know of, any adequate models of monitors. Uh, there is a model of the original monitor, but even that's kind of small and whatever. But I wanted, uh, it's actually, the, the U.S. Navy built 54 ironclads, of which most of them were monitors. And so I'd like to get a, just a, a typical monitor. And the, uh, that's the one I have there, the, the, the uh, Tecumseh class, uh, which was an improved monitor. Now, the monitor had a lot of faults, which Ericsson never recognized. And actually, when you look at what the British were building at that time, with one of their ironclads, they could have blasted through our, our um, blockade, smashed our monitors, and that would be the end of it. One of the problems was it's low freeboard. Okay, and here you get another view of the freeboard here, maybe. Um, it's, they said that a, um, a long arm, it's true, a, a long arm sailor could reach his hand down, his arm down from the deck and could touch the water. And that was a low freeboard, and so that's good, again, for rivers and whatever, but it made them very susceptible to sinking. And uh, one of them, for that, the, the Weehawk, and which was kind of another uh, monitor in the one I showed you, that same place, sank at harbor in Charleston just because a wave came along. Not a very big wave either, but it, it just, there was a couple of open hatches, and the, the, mod, the, the freeboard was so low that the water da dashed into it and, and, and down below decks and a fair number of sailors died because they couldn't get up in time. When the Tecumseh was hit uh, by a mine at the Battle of um, Mobile Bay in August 1864, it went down in less than two minutes. It's also, by the way, the first example of an instantaneous destruction of a warship. You know, it's, kind of, it's hard to sink a wooden ship and you can figure out why. Unless it caught fire and the magazine exploded, uh, usually they were captured. Maybe they might sink themselves or whatever, but uh, the crew might sink them. But very hard. But now with these he these heavy metal ships, they began to go down and explode too because they had a lot more modern explosives in them. So anyway, the monitor, um, I say, they, they, it actually with these faults, other faults, the guns were very slow in firing. And um, they, the low freeboard, the slow firing uh, of it was uh, uh, something that was, so uh, faults of the, of the mod. As a matter of fact, there's a book uh, written by a naval historian called The World's Worst Warships. And in that, they include the monitor class, okay? But at the time, we thought, oh, we're really, the, it, because it's so modern, there's no master sails for one thing. And all the British ironclads of, at that time and for a few years afterwards are all had, had a full rig of mast and sails or semi full anyway uh, to, to, because coal is expensive. And of course, again, they're, they have a, an empire and we did not. We just had the, the, the eastern seaboard of the United States to defend. And um, so and the monitor is kind of a dead end, too. We didn't make any after the uh, Civil War. We made a few way bet later in the uh, Spanish-American War of 1898, but they were almost considered a joke, again, because they're low freeboard, they're low speed, um, and they're low rate of firing. But um, it was, it, it, this was, they even that song, give us a fleet of monitors and, you know, we will f sweep the coast of, of, the, uh, of the rebels. The, the Confederacy never built monitors. It was too complicated. A, um, in fact, they, you know, the, the Confederacy, and this is one of the reasons why the Union won, they could not, they, their, their industrial infrastructure, they could not make a complete set of marine engines. 
they could restore them, they could you know clean them up and whatever, but they could not you know cast out the, the uh, all the, the heavy fittings and so on of a, a complete set of marine engines. So they everything they had they got from they had to get from sunken uh, U.S. Uh, uh, federal ships. But anyway, that's what I want to talk about the monitor, just give you another, another view of it here, or a monitor. This is actually based on the Tecumseh, the one that went down in Mobile Bay in uh, 1864, and it's still there. Okay, I was part of a project to uh, investigate this and see if it could be raised, but it could not be, they figure it can't be raised because what's holding it together along the, um, the, the uh, upper uh, uh, deck is white pine beams. And if those white pine beams ever hit air after being in water for 130 you know, years, uh, they, they, they turned, they, they split. And that'd be it, the whole, the whole monitor just kind of collapse, open up. So it's gonna stay there. But um, at any rate, uh, the monitor is sort of the dead end, but yet a, a, um, a point of a, a American pride and American ingenuity, American inventiveness, and we'll win the war with monitors. Well, that's, the history program, Stan the History Man. I'm your host, Dr. Stanley Sandler, and I'll talk to you later.